Hello there, welcome to Adicraft. Today we've got something very special for you. That's out of the blue, they've dropped the very first of the Caves and Cliffs update 1.17 snapshots. So I'm going to be running through with you all of the new blocks, some of the new mechanics, and a whole bunch of builds and build ideas that you can use these for. Uh, first of all, make sure that if you don't already, you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, don't go anywhere, and let's get on with the video. So the first thing we're going to do is look at some of the new blocks that have come along. So the first one is this tinted glass. Now this is created uh, from using some glass and surrounding it from uh, some of the amethyst shards, which I'm going to talk about in a little while. Now this tinted glass has some special properties. Firstly, you don't need a silk touch pick to actually break it. So if I switch into survival here, uh, then you can actually just break this glass and it drops as itself. Uh, so that's kind of one of the things. The other interesting thing about it is that actually it doesn't let any light through. So although it's translucent, you can use this for creating mob farms and things and still ensure that no light gets into your farm but actually it gives you a good line of sight and it's also got this fantastic new texture. So yeah, really, really nice new glass type. Uh, and as I mentioned, that is using normal glass and surrounding it with some amethyst shards, which brings us onto these two blocks here. So we have the amethyst, uh, uh, the block of amethyst, and then we also have the budding amethyst here. Now, as you can see, they've got slightly different textures on them. Don't know whether you can they can transition between them or whether they're fixed in these block states yet um, however the amethyst the budding amethyst here um, is what is used to actually grow these amethyst uh, small buds and there's a number of these that we'll cover off and we'll go through the mechanics of them in a bit but yeah it's using this block that actually gives you the amethyst shards um, and what we've been told so far is that these won't be movable. Uh, in fact, like it's not like immovable. I think these will be kind of a static as bedrock potentially. So there's nothing that we can do to actually get these away from these amethyst geodes, which is where these are due to spawn. Next thing to talk about is the copper block. Now this is going to be created using some of the copper ingots. Again, going to be checking in on those later. Uh, you craft nine of those together to give you a copper block. And then if you take the copper blocks and put them two by two in a crafting grid, um, so you can craft these without a bench, you can create these lovely um, cut copper blocks. Now, as you'll see from this one, it is a waxed cut copper block. The copper itself has four different states that it can go through. So you've got this normal copper, you've got the lightly weathered, you've got the semi weathered, and then you've got the weathered. Now of these, um, Obviously, the first three go through a transition over a period of time to get to that final state. However, you can lock these in their initial state by using some honeycomb. So, yeah, you can take these if you want to keep these in your build in their current state. You add some honeycomb in a crafting bench or the crafting grid and you can create these wax types and that wax will protect it from the weathering uh, going forward. So yeah, we've got these and they've got some beautiful textures. Again, we're missing some really metallic-y looking blocks in Minecraft at the moment, so this copper is a brilliant one. Um, yeah, coming through, we've got, the, uh, we've got the cut, we've got the stairs and we've got the slabs in all of these varieties, so quite a lot of new blocks. And then when you get here, you've got some really, really nice color for something like a garden or a swamp or something like that. Then you've got a real kind of like an underwater ruin would be really good for this uh, semi weathered block. And then you've finally got this gorgeous, gorgeous green, um, greeny blue, turquoisey color for the, uh, the weathered copper block. So really, really liking these textures and these new blocks as a whole. But yeah, another good reason to make a, uh, a bee, bee farm and uh, start getting your um, your honeycomb because yeah you'll need it for weathering all of these blocks going forward apart from this one because obviously once it gets to this stage it can't be weathered anymore so now we're going to start looking at some of the other blocks and the items that have come up 
Next along the line, we have this, uh, which is the copper ore. Now, again, you've got some like elements of the orange and the green in this texture, so you can kind of gives you a hint about what's happening. And you, you mine this, and then you smelt it up, and this gives you your copper ingots. So your copper ingots here can then be crafted into your copper and various different things when they're in ingot form that, again, we're going to cover a little bit later on. So one of the things in the notes is that this isn't the final form of copper. Now, I don't know whether they specifically mean the texture, i.e. how it's going to look, or whether they mean that there is going to be some other potential ore variants coming out with copper. So, uh, yeah, it's one to watch going forward. Next, we have these, the amethyst clusters. Now, these come in four, uh, four growth stages. So you've got the small you've got the medium, you've got the large, and then you've got the final cluster. These will grow on your amethyst geodes, um, on your budding amethyst. It's worth noting though that if I again just switch into survival, the only one of these that will drop, and they have some lovely sound effects, when, they, when you actually mine them, is this one. And this one will drop you some amethyst shards. So you need to make sure that you wait for the uh, the blocks fully to grow into the right levels um, before you actually start mining those. So yeah, those are the amethyst shards, or rather the amethyst clusters. Uh, and uh, go back into creative mode a second. And then we've got something really, really exciting. Obviously we've got the shards here. We have got candles. Now, we haven't just got candles in one variety, we have got candles in every single one of the colors available in Minecraft. Now, the candles are placeable like sea pickles in the sense of you can place one, two, three, or four together. So brilliant, brilliant new decoration blocks that we've got here. And using a flint and steel, you can light these candles as well. Um, and these have got a slightly different light source in that they actually flicker. So as you can see, they dip down and uh, the more of them that you've got, obviously the more light output that you get from these um, and potentially the less of a, an overall flicker that you get from the, the effect. But yeah, still a lot to be seen with these candles, but finally we have some new light sources and something very, very, um, good for giving some ambience in your in your builds now there's one other thing to note with the candles if we come down here as you can see the candles themselves can be waterlogged however for very obvious reasons when they're waterlogged you can't actually light them so yeah again even if you're doing an underwater build or something like that you can decorate things with these candles and you can have it like you've got a flooded area Next along the line, using the copper and the amethyst shards, we have got a spyglass. Now, spyglass, glass, you just click on it and you can then zoom in and get quite a lot, actually, of uh, difference in the zoom that you get as to normal. It does give you quite a small aperture, but overall, it's good for vanilla players to have something that gives them the ability to look uh, into the distance. And I think that this is kind of designed to go with the cliffs. Uh, so that you can look in the distance, see what's on the cliffs, um, or go onto the cliffs and the mountains themselves, and just observe what's around. So yeah, really, really good, uh, good block there. Here we have the next item on the agenda, which is uh, the, the yeah the bundles. Now these bundles are crafted using a um, uh, some rabbit hides and some string. So that's what you need. And even though I can't really get them working, so even when I went into survival um, mode, I couldn't get anything to go into the bundles, so I think there might still be some bugs with them. However, the bundles can hold 64 or a stack of anything. So if it's a non-stackable item, uh, like a, a wooden sword, for example, then it will only hold one, um, but it would hold uh, 16 ender pearls or eggs, um, uh, or signs or 64 of your regular stackable blocks so quite a lot of variation in there because I couldn't get it to work I don't know quite how you open and close them but I think they're still actually working on those mechanics but yeah the bundles themselves they've got a crafting recipe in there 
Now, one of the blocks that we um, that should be here uh, is the lightning rod, and this actually comes in the redstone menu. So, the lightning rod here is a great block because you can place it like so, and it attracts lightning in a, I think it's a 16 by 16 area, so basically a chunk. But for a decoration purpose, it's another block that we can place directionally. And yeah, really, really good. It's also a full block length, so it links up between blocks. So there's lots of different things that you could do uh, potentially with this block. Um, lots of things. So if you, for example, put a block here and place a lightning rod there, then you get a lovely little fact of the two blocks kind of touching the ends together. Um, and there's going to be loads and loads of things that we can do with with this block alongside its regular use of just attracting the lightning so really really happy about this now to go on just to a couple of game mechanics that's worth mentioning before we get on to showing you some some build ideas um, firstly you can now put lava in cauldrons and this gives out a redstone signal of one um, so yeah for the redstoners out there it's kind of another variation on the kind of lava um, on the cauldron and what you can do with that and I'm sure that'll be really really useful another thing that'll probably be useful is yeah waterlogged rails rails will no longer be popped off by water which is a bit of a mixed blessing because as anybody who's gone to a mine shaft and has wanted to pick up all the rails and just chuck down a bucket of water and it's popped them all off to make it easy to pick them up won't be able to do that anymore uh, however it does mean that you can have all sorts of fantastic contraptions and one of the things is that when the minecarts do go underwater they do lose quite a lot of their speed uh, so i was running this before i waterlogged it and it goes much much quicker but yeah all of the uh, the rail types seem to work and yeah this is now fully waterloggable and i think that they're going to be waterlogging uh, some other blocks in the future as well but we'll have to see for future snapshots now on to some of the build ideas first of all we're going to look at some flooring designs so here we've got a mixture of some prismarine uh, with some copper and then we've got some of the stripped warped wood in there as well and some dark prismarine as you can see that there's a, a really nice blend there even when the prismarine starts to change color um, you still get a really nice tone going through this now if you wanted something a bit more stand out uh, and contrasting then obviously you can use something a bit like this orange and what we've got here is the orange terracotta and then we've got the stripped acacia logs as well so those are basically uh, contrasting colors to the the copper that we've got going on that again uh, would make a really really nice statement in a base now if you really really uh, are either playing in creative or want to show off your bling then uh, you can have this lovely design again with the copper uh, but using some diamonds and yeah this really really stands out this would make a, a lovely floor for a base but you would uh, definitely need to have done a fair bit of mining or be playing in creative to do that now coming in again with the warped wood but this time with the bark still on it, this purple still goes really really well with the copper not so much copper in this one but again tying in with the prismarine bricks um, just as a nice pattern and uh, yeah just going for the two extremes a really re simple design here with the copper and the uh, the weathered copper as well so just showing how those two tones really really do work well now this one I'm quite pleased with because it actually makes use of mycelium which is uh, generally considered um, depending on where you stand uh, quite an ugly block um, but when you combine that with the lightly weathered copper block and also some of the stripped jungle and some of the uh, granite variants then you get quite a nice effect there now if you wanted to use some brick and go for the original copper uh, then that also works quite well and then you can make it quite clean with some polished diorite in there and or you can go for something a bit more like a checkerboard pattern now um, yeah this one's really really good it would be really nice in the, for a floor uh, maybe for an underwater build or something like that i mean the copper really does lend itself to an underwater theme so yeah i can i can definitely see people using that now here we've got the renamed uh, dirt path now this was the grass um, grass path previously and uh, now it's gone to the dirt, dirt path and just using some dirt and again 
the lightly weathered copper blocks um, just work, work very well. Here we've got another one of the more recent blocks, the warped warp block. Now this warped warp block just yeah has have this greeny um, well just this turquoise color in there already so that kind of does complement very well into the very similar colors that we've got here and particularly if you use something a bit bolder like some cyan concrete or some of the stripped warp stem again another exterior design using this weathered this semi weathered copper now so this is the one that's got a bit more of the browny kind of tones in there then this actually goes quite well with the mossy stone and the mossy stone of course goes quite well with grass so you could have something like that with maybe a border around it here again using the mossy stone similar colors but something quite uh, bright at the edges with some uh, some of the emerald blocks and then this is just some acacia so the acacia also works there with the uh, the mossy stone and last I didn't want to do this without doing at least one use of the amethyst so the end um, is obviously a very purple dimension and because of this the end stone in that dimension is designed to go well with the purple so if you bring in the amethyst uh, bring in some of the uh, blue light blue and blue terracottas and then maybe some purple glass as well you can have a really nice pattern particularly for an end base for some wall designs uh, then the light grey terracotta again goes really really well with this uh, lightly weathered copper block um, here again some stone bricks just something else again to mix things up it looks like you've got some metal panels bolted into the wall here so that would be good for a steampunk type design as would something like this in fact just to go in the other direction but with the more bold of the copper block itself and then coming through to the the prismarine type variants this just goes so well with prismarine um, and when it goes well with prismarine it also goes well with the warped uh, blocks and just throwing in some cyan concrete powder at the same time here is another one with some bling but just showing that the diamond block has actually got some blocks that it can go nicely with such as the stripped warp stem and now the copper block moving on now to the uh, the lighting of course with the addition of candles then you have to start thinking about some potential lighting designs now these candles uh, do line up with the two pixel width so they do work quite well with things um, like you could stand them on top of a lever there um, doesn't yeah it, it doesn't quite blend in as, um, as well as say an end rod but it still works quite nicely particularly from a distance with it just standing there and when you look at it from an angle because you've just got that angled block something that I am really really pleased with is actually using this brewing stand and when you add in three candles there because you've got the three stems it does actually look quite good and particularly the further away you've got it looks like you've really got a, uh, a, a candlestick there now of course with this um, two two pixel width you can work quite nicely with some iron bars but if you wanted to make use of the fact that you've got multiple candles then just having a little shelf and maybe a little dent divot into the wall like this or just setting something back and then I've just got a copper block behind it just as an accent works very well now something like this again uses the lever to potentially connect up and then just makes use of um, some of the fences to give you that that basis to actually put the uh, the candle on and because these are four pixels wide then you get the candle sitting quite nicely on top of course with the chain blocks you could just stand them on a chain and that looks pretty good itself um, or just using some other variations with some chains and yeah making use of some of the other fence variants works nicely too or you can just go and expand it with some white glass or any other color glass because obviously of course with all of these different colored candles it gives you many many color options depending on whatever base you've got and you're working with and uh, yeah if you decide to use a wall then it gives you plenty of space because the actual hitbox for these candles is really really quite small um, even when you've got four candles on there so yeah having a wall gives you something that you can base it on now one of my favorite ideas is the fact that these candles don't actually need anything to place on there so you can go and have something a bit like in Hogwarts where you've got 
whole bunch of floating candles. So if you were doing something like that, you could just have all of these candles floating in the sky and they would look brilliant in a build like that. So yeah, that's a really, really good idea. Or you could just have a little pillar using again the prismarine. Uh, prismarine goes really well with the warped and then using the cyan, you've got just these little pillars. And here is the first one that's actually using uh, these lightning rods. Now these lightning rods themselves are, are really good. Um, to place it down like this, basically you, you just need something to place against on the underside and then you can choose the direction that you've got. So you can have it as kind of like a candle straight on top of that or you can pillar these up and get sort of quite a long, something like a banister would work really, really well. These would be brilliant for banisters. Uh, again, just using some, some simple things, um, but making use of things where you would have put a torch on before. Now the candles work really well. And something like this is a bit of a bigger, uh, a, a bigger candlestick. Again, works really well. And with this copper block, because it's quite light, you can get away with much darker candles. Um, here, again, using a wall gives you a, just a bigger basis. Um, and you could use, say, a, a lightning rod underneath that in order to actually uh, step that up. And again, that's one of the designs that looks quite good from distance. Now for some hanging lights, um, yeah, it's just some variations really on some of the themes that you will, I'm sure, have seen in the past. Using some of the chains that we've got now, obviously chains look like things are hanging really well and you can accentuate it with other chains. Equally fences and these lightning rods, these acacia fences and the lightning rods go really, uh, really well together because of the copper that you've got in there. And then with the contrast of the white candles on top of that orange is really, really nice. And here using the copper block as well, just um, having a, a number of levers around that copper block, you can have something that's a bit chunkier, but again, works really, really nicely. If you wanted a bit more light coming down, again, you can put full walls in. And then the black stone, uh, again, contrasting because you've got the, the black of the wick in there. It's quite a similar color with the chain. Again, that's a really, really nice design. Now, one of the best things about the actual um, copper itself is some of the gradients that you can create. So you've obviously got the different levels of the copper that mash and mix nicely together, bringing you from the fully weathered right the way through the semi to the lightly and the actual copper. But one of the good things is these tie up quite nicely with some of the wood types that we've already got. So if you bring the acacia in through the jungle and bring that jungle through into the warped wood, you can almost use fences to echo what you've got in terms of the coloration of your copper. So when you're building, well, you're, when you're making your builds, if you do choose to let it weather naturally, actually, if you've got fences involved, um, you could quite easily change the fences out over time just to match the rest of the build. So that's a really, really nice touch that you could have. Now for the final build, and just to give a bit more of an initial idea, uh, bearing in mind that the uh, update only dropped this evening, uh, the first thing that just came to mind for me was to to look at something like a submarine. So I I decided to do a, a sort of uh, a version of the Nautilus in there from Jules Verne's um, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And uh, yeah, just by initially building it in the copper and then mixing in some of the other tones and sort of bringing the gradients in, you really get the feeling that this is something that's kind of maybe rusted and um, been in the water for a, a significant period of time. And I think that although it was kind of touted for roofs that actually the undersea builds with this copper because you've kind of got that weathering effect is one of the things that's going to be um yeah one of the most impressive uh, builds uh, that you can use in the build palettes for that and when you throw in some things like some prismarine walls and then um, some granite walls as well you can equally they're close enough in color not quite exactly the same um, but close enough in color to the other uh, to the copper types that you can really get away with that um, and again using the trap doors and the buttons um, with those three different button types yeah you get some nice some nice variation you can accent that nicely so yeah i with that all being said i hope you've enjoyed this video um, just as some initial thoughts some ideas some build hacks 
for you with the new blocks of the first of the 1.17 uh, cliffs and caves update um, just to give you some ideas like I say I hope you've enjoyed the video if you have do let me know in the comments do hit that like button um, do let me know if there's any other builds that you'd like to see with these new blocks um, it really really does help any any sort of comments like that um, really do enjoy reading those uh, above all as well if you don't already hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time on AD craft bye <laughs>